Good morning, folks. Starting with the last 24 hours of quakes as of pre-sunrise, United States. Largest are on top. Had a 5.7 in Alaska, 5.6 in Russia, two 5-pointers in Chile. A slow motion disaster is taking place in California as half a neighborhood slides down a hill. Evacuations have left all people out of harm's way. Folks, the cyclone in the Bay of Bengal is expected to reach peak strength tonight. The current track takes it at the eastern coastline of India, but most forecasts are expecting a shift northeast and a direct impact to Bangladesh. While we wait for its arrival, the deadly hailstorms continue in eastern India, with more deaths here and significant damage. Got a set of powerful lows from the northern Pacific across to the Yukon Territory in Canada. Now just like you see when these knuckle across the Midwest, a convergence tail is present south of the main low pressure cell. The tail of the Yukon has one heck of a wingspan as Texas heat is brought all the way north across the border. All this heat energy headed north will create severe storms out west tonight. Coming to space weather, Bartol Neutron Monitor is offline again. I was not able to catch any removed readings like I did last time. After 2013 gave us predictability so far, the umbral field has gone bonkers since April. Frankly, I may be out of my league until this calms down. Looking at the Earth-facing disk reveals two small dark coronal holes. Remember on this coronal view the sunspots are actually bright loops of plasma and charged particles. 24-hour solar wind data shows some variability beginning on the right side, a little bit higher density, and we'll keep watch as always. Looking at the sunspots, we had another day of increasing sunspot numbers. Up north, it appears that each has a beta polarity with the larger groups to the left and south appearing jumbled enough for a gamma classification. Down south, the magnetics are better divided, but by no means incapable of large flaring. I'll come back up north to point at the limb. You can barely see this active region cresting here, and this is the focus of today's top story. As you watch these sunspots turn in, I want you to focus top left. On this particular AIA frame, it is unusual to see particles detected above the solar surface, but our side view of the incoming sunspot here allowed us to witness the rare phenomenon. Of course, could also be witnessed from afar as well. That is one huge CME, and I'll begin the story a few hours before it began. The sun started popping more M flares yesterday, and I wanted to try to catch the radio blackout of one of them. I missed the first, but mid flare on the right, I pulled up the D region absorption and revealed a significant propagation degradation beneath where the sun was directly overhead. Little did I know that while I slept, the sun had an X class flare brewing. Looking in 131 angstroms easily reveals that the sunspot cresting the limb is indeed the culprit of the X-flare just after 2 a.m. UTC. You can see a corresponding spike on the Rio meter at the same time. I was asleep for this event, but if you were to watch an X-flare radio blackout frame by frame, it might look like this. I'm going to leave you with many shots of that flare, and a comment about yet another flare from behind the limb rather than Earth-facing sunspots, which tend to go quiet when they face Earth. Please remember, a mega flare is obviously bad, but flares in general are not. We need flares for our atmosphere, and we need them to be more Earth-facing than this. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.